Welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Chapter 4 Communing with Jesus We just discussed Revelation 3 verse 20 and how we need to develop our ability to hear Jesus' voice. But there is so much more to this scripture. The second half is about how Jesus will come into our heart and commune with us. He actually says he will eat with us and us with him. This divine union with Jesus is the most beautiful experience any of us can ever have. Recently, I saw a video of a baby being offered ice cream for the first time. As I watched the video the Holy Spirit quickened to me something I found a bit shocking. For many years I have known that when I come into a place of surrender to Jesus and I feel Him in my heart that I'm overcome with a desire to possess Him. He is the most delectable treat to my heart I have ever known. When I saw this video, I knew it was similar to how I respond in the spirit to Jesus' goodness in my heart. Let me explain. When that baby first tasted the ice cream she stopped and looked tremendously shocked. Then her eyes got big as saucers. Clearly, she had just encountered something beyond exceptional and she didn't know what to do. Then suddenly her instinct kicked in and she grabbed the ice cream with both hands. It was oozing through her fingers as she crammed as much of it in her mouth as she could. When the Holy Spirit quickened this to me, I knew that was exactly how I felt about Jesus. Scripture says that we should taste and see that the Lord is good. Wow! He is more than just good. He is the most treasured sweetness anyone can ever know in their spirit and soul. Once I got a good taste of Jesus I was ruined forever. Nothing else satisfies me and I find myself crying and mourning over my loss if I don't get a good taste of him every day. In Revelation 2 verse 4 it talks about renewing our first love. As we learn to experience Jesus in our hearts this is exactly what happens. Like that baby taking its first bite of ice cream we cannot get enough of him. We cling to him and long for him. Psalms 42 verses 1 to 2, TPT. I long to drink of you, O God, to drink deeply from the streams of pleasure flowing from your presence. My longings overwhelm me for more of you. My soul thirsts, pants, and longs for the living God. I want to come and see the face of God. What stops us from having our souls filled with God's goodness? What hinders us from knowing God personally face to face in the Spirit? In Jeremiah 17 verse 9 it says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? God is the only one that can look into our hearts and sort out the selfish mess. The scripture passage goes on to say that God searches each person's heart and rewards them accordingly. We know that it is out of our heart that our actions come to fruition. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4 verse 23 Once Adam and Eve lost their spiritual connection with God their hearts and minds became a battleground as they were open to the enemy's influence. I think that is why God took his spirit out of the world. It would have been like sharing his pearls with swine. They would have gobbled up the holy goodness along with the pig slop. We see that at certain points God did give people his spirit but they had to be walking in faith with him. We see this with Abraham, Moses, and Jesus of course. But after Jesus' death the earth was redeemed and the door from our heart into Jesus could now be opened. At this point the Holy Spirit could return to the earth, 
and we see this officially done at Pentecost. This was also happening individually. As each person believes in the blood of Jesus for their sins then their heart becomes the place of divine connection where God's Spirit dwells inside. We may not have understood this, but when Adam and Eve sinned and opened their hearts and minds to the enemy God had to close the door into his precious kingdom. The only way he could keep his kingdom pure and holy is by not allowing those with wicked hearts and motives access to it. We see this very clearly in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. I'll pull out a few key verses, but I recommend you read both chapters. 1 Corinthians 1 verses 27 to 30, But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. As I mentioned before when we are born again, we are like spiritual babies. To learn and grow in the spirit we must be humble and childlike. That is why Jesus says that, unless you become like a child you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18 verse 3 We must learn as born-again believers to be like a child spiritually. This humble heart posture helps us to develop the ability to see with our spiritual eyes and to hear with our spiritual ears. All through scripture Jesus often said, for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. This is what it means. By removing the Holy Spirit from the earth, the Father hid the kingdom away from those who would plunder its beauty and sweetness. Yet, through Jesus Christ as we allow the Spirit to train us, we can learn to see his kingdom. Still, it is only through Jesus in our hearts that we will learn to commune with God and to see him face to face. That is why Jesus says, I am the way the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father, except through me. John 14 verse 6, Matthew 5 verse 8 says that, the pure of heart will see God. Most of us think that means later when we pass from this life into the next. That is true, but scripture is in layers and as we mature the meaning becomes deeper and more insightful. I believe this scripture means that the kingdom of light has been hidden from the prideful and selfish. In 1 Corinthians 2 verses 7 to 8 it says, No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. In 1 Corinthians 2 verses 11 to 14 Paul writes, For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom but in words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. The person without the Spirit, or not yielded or listening to the Spirit, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God but considers them foolishness, and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Parentheses mine. You can see that God the Father chose to hide salvation and his kingdom from the enemy. This means that every heart that is full of pride, earthly wisdom, and highly intellectual will overlook the foolishness found in the cross. Even those who get saved, but then work from a purely intellectual standpoint will also miss the deeper things of God. In my book Heaven's Door, I have a story about an invisible forest. What Jesus showed me through this story was that we are always a tiny step away from experiencing his kingdom, but that step must be taken with a very childlike trust and faith in Jesus. You can read the story it is in chapter 24. This story is a perfect illustration of how easy it is to find the kingdom of God. But it can only be found by those with the heart and faith of a child. That is because God hid away the most precious parts of himself and his kingdom for those who love him most. 
These are the people who have tender hearts that will cherish and honor his heart in return. This is why Jesus said the pure of heart will see God. Only those who want to know God because they love him will be allowed to see and know him personally. Whenever my selfish heart wants to know Jesus for my own means, or I have a grocery list of prayer requests then I am denied access to the kingdom in the spirit. It is only as I come with a sweet childlike trust that only wants Jesus and his kingdom out of a pure love that I am given access to the heavenly realms. A simple childlike faith and love are void of destructive attitudes that would use and hurt God. If you have spent much time with small children then you know they can be wide open to anything when they trust you. This kind of love is void of fear. Most of us think that the opposite of love is hate. But I have found that the opposite of heavenly love is fear. We see that with Adam and Eve who hid when God came into the garden. We also hide from God and live in fear when we do not trust him. Scripture says that perfect love casts out all fear. This is how we will experience God in his kingdom. When we make a choice to let go of all thoughts that hold on to fear and doubt of God's goodness the kingdom of heaven will open and we can experience Jesus. Finally, I want to talk a bit about how the two stairway to heaven's door books are meant to be used. The first book is about Revelation 3 verse 20. The second book is about Revelation 3 colon 21 dash 4 colon 2. As a whole Revelation 3 colon 20 dash 4 colon 2 was used to guide me along in how to experience Jesus. First, like with John, Revelation chapter 1, Jesus came to me here on earth and taught me how to open my heart. Through all his precious ways he showed me that he really can capture and hold my attention as I meet with him. Then he had me invite him to eat with me. He would often come while I was cooking and we would have a wonderful time. We still do this at times. These are all the things I will teach you to do through the Encountering Jesus trainings in this book. You will find one Encountering Jesus training session after each section in this book. In the second book I will teach you more about your heavenly place and how to enjoy Jesus in his kingdom. There will be more Encountering Jesus training sessions as well. I'll talk more about book two at the end of this one. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book One, is part of a series. The first book was called Heaven's Door, and the book after this one is Stairway to Heaven's Door, Book Two. And all of these books are on Amazon, so you can purchase them. And they, most of them are on YouTube, so you can listen. All of these books have been written to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great day. Bye now.